Okay, what we have here is a mass spectrometer. It's made of lots of different stages, and some of them use electric fields, some of them use magnetic fields, and some of them use both. And it's used to determine the mass of different particles that you put in at this end. The first stage is to actually put the sample in, normally as a gas, and then we have this hot filament, which has a high voltage across it. As the high voltage is applied across it, there's a large current through the filament, so it heats up. And as it gets hot enough, it starts to emit electrons. This is called thermionic emission. These electrons collide with the electrons in the atoms of the sample. So like this. So when these electrons collide, they can knock out these electrons, causing the atoms to become ionized. Normally you knock out one electron, making it positive one ions. But sometimes you can knock out two electrons, giving them a positive two ions. The next stage is to accelerate these uh, ions. So initially we assume that they come in stationary, so at really low speeds, and they accelerate by this uh, electric field. So the voltage, the potential difference between these two plates is V, and we can work out, so the work, voltage is defined as work done per unit charge. So if you multiply that by the charge, you get the work done by the electric field, and that's going to turn into kinetic energy, so half m v squared. So if we rearrange this, we can find the velocity at which most of the particles will leave uh, to that slit on the right hand side. But obviously some of the particles have different masses, so they can leave at different speeds. The next stage is to actually select only one speed, so ensure that only what particles at a certain speed go through. This stage uses both an electric field and a magnetic field. The last stage used an electric field only. So here we have uh, the both fields on top of each other. So the electric field here is, as for example, let's pretend it's a positive charge. Uh, the electric field will apply force upwards. We want the magnetic field to apply a force downwards. And what we want is these forces to be balanced at a certain velocity. So if we, if we apply Fleming's left hand rule, we can find that we need the magnetic field to be out of the page for the magnetic force to be downwards. That's because the current is going towards the right. So when we when the, at a certain velocity, these forces will be balanced and we can derive that condition. So we can say the electric field strength is the potential difference between those two plates divided by uh, dis the distance between those plates d. Now note that this voltage is different from the voltage used over here. So these two are different voltages. V1 and V2 if you want it. Uh, electric, electric field strength is defined as force per unit charge, so if I multiply it by the charge I can get the force and I want that to be balanced by the magnetic force BQV. So if I rearrange this I can I find that I can get V cancelling out the Q's because you can see it doesn't depend on the charge. V over D equals B V. And then rearranging this you get the selective velocity is V over D B, which is the same as the electric field strength divided by the magnetic flux density. So only this certain velocity will go undeviated. If the electric field is too strong, then it will particles will go north uh, upwards and if it's too weak and the magnetic field stronger then the particles will deviate this way but on th uh, this certain velocity here will go undeviated okay the next part is the deflection part where it's just the magnetic field so here's just a magnetic field and if we apply Fleming's left hand rule you'll find that the field again is out of the page because the current is towards the right and you can see the force here must be towards the right. It's actually doing a circular motion while it's inside the field because it's uh, any all charged particles do circular motion when it's just a uniform magnetic field. So we can do BQV is equal to MV squared over R and rearranging this we get the normal equation R equals MV over BQ. So using the radius of curvature, so this lets us figure out the radius curvature because it's going, what's going to happen is going to hit the detector and we can figure out R. So if we can figure out R, 
we know what B is, the amount of flux uh, density used over here, which is actually going to be different from the one used over here. Um, and then we know what the velocity came in because we had the velocity selector. We know that the most among going to be plus one charge. We can figure out the mass of the particles by seeing where they collide with the detector over here. Obviously, the ones that have a bigger mass will have a bigger radius of curvature. So that will help us determine which one has a bigger mass. So the next stage obviously hits the detector there. And normally when it hits the detector, it's going to cause some excitation in the atoms in the detector and then they de-excite and they emit some kind of light.